I'm Jeff Smith. I'm a product designer at Facebook, and I currently work on um, misinformation and polarization uh, at Facebook and on Newsfeed. As was previously said, I also lead Facebook.design. So what does that all mean? Um, about, I mean, I think we all remember the 2016 election happened, and I was quickly brought in to help address issues of misinformation on Facebook um, in a quick war room, and have kind of stayed with that product ever since. So um, about a year and a half ago, we launched uh, Disputed Flags, which essentially flagged content that had been flagged by third-party fact-checkers on Facebook as a way of flagging misinformation. So people could see this, they could report it, and then if they tried to share it, they'd also get interst interstitials as they went through. Um, I've stayed with that product as it's evolved. So our most recent um, iteration of this is related articles where we flag content with fact-checked content um, and give people a way of sort of pinning if, I guess, triaging the content they see in feed and identifying if it's misleading, that sort of thing. I also lead Facebook.design, which is our collection of resources, which is the equivalent of the open source work that the engineers do at Facebook. So this is a collection of medium posts, videos, and then ultimately resources that we give back to the community. This is really important because I think it's an expression of how Facebook views um, our contributions towards design. Um, all of this work is done by Facebook designers in their free time, and it's really, uh, again, a contribution back to the design community that has given us so much. Um, an important part of this is vector devices, and this relates to um, Framer specifically because all of these vector devices are actually baked into Framer now, which is I think really advantageous for us in making really like beautiful prototypes. Um, and dozens of designers spent dozens of hours putting these, pro these devices together in you know, Sketch and then ultimately giving them back to the community. So what I want to talk about today is that Framer is incredibly flexible for building prototypes that scale for large, team, or for large teams and then scaling projects. Or sorry, I should say that again. Large projects and scaling teams. And I want to touch on two points there the large project aspect of things, and then ultimately scaling teams. My prototyping, given the work that I do, really skews on the team size, like large team size with large project length and duration. So we're talking about like year long projects that take um, you know, a lot of contributions from user research, international testing, field work, that sort of thing. Um, which is very different than how I worked when I was at startups or smaller companies. And Framer has been incredible for doing that over a long period of time. And so I want to emphasize that with one case study of a product that we re recently released that I think ties together both kind of the interesting product work that I've been doing at Facebook, but also why Framer is such a critical tool to how I work. So the people problem with this project that we released was people don't know what information they can trust on Facebook which is a big problem when you scroll through feed, uh, your grandma shares a link and you don't know whether or not it's accurate. And we wanna give people tools to make informed judgments about the content they consume on Facebook. So the product we ultimately built was uh, a feature that allowed you to pin, the, to uh, find out more about an article in feed by just tapping a little button on any link attachment there. And that would ultimately give you all sorts of informa information about that link. So Wikipedia information, which is a really helpful third-party resource in figuring out, like, if, is this source biased? Is this source, like, real? Um, where is it based? All sorts of secondary information that's really helpful in informing the credibility of the content that we consume. And then related articles, which is a really important um, tool that we found in terms of flagging content. Again, seeing other sources, what other sources are saying about something on Facebook um, helps people make informed judgments about, their, about what they're consuming. And then finally, um, seeing where, there's, where this was shared and who shares content is also a helpful way of vectoring and getting a sense of where the content's coming from. So this product took a year to build, and it went from concept to lab testing to field research and then ultimately to marketing assets. And what I think is really cool about this and what makes Framer a great tool for this type of work is the Framer type prototype that I built from the very beginning, from the very concept stage, ultimately lived out throughout the entire life cycle of this product all the way until we actually released it as a marketing asset. Um, and so I'm just gonna talk through that process, and I think there are really helpful elements of my process that can hopefully inform uh, your prototyping or even your picking up Framer as a tool that you can use. So this product started out as initial concepts, 
We essentially, when we were thinking about doing related articles for misinformation, we thought it would be really interesting if we could give every user the ability to find related articles on the content they see in feed and do it on any article. So initially we went from um, options that were really discreet, like finding out from the secondary menu in the t upper right hand corner of a story, more content or to access this, this secondary information. Um, could you long press on an article? Or should we go to something extreme like giving an like, explicit button for you to be able to find this information? Then through those initial concepts, we actually plugged in content and we played around with this a little bit further, went through reviews. At this point, I haven't jumped into Framer at all, just kind of getting, try, trying to get feedback and buy-in on this initial concept. And then we did card sorting with users. So an important part of this is what information is actually helpful for people to actually figure out what's credible on Facebook. And so we, we iterated on a bunch of different modules that we then printed out, handed to users, and through multiple studies with users, had them sort that information and tell us what was the most helpful in, in assessing the credibility of the content they are consuming. So again, haven't jumped into Framer yet, but getting a really good pin on this overall concept through these iterations and user testing. And then we jump into prototyping. So I think it's important to talk about why we prototype. And I think we prototype for two reasons. It's ultimately to get feedback on a concept, and it's to get that feedback either from your teammates or from the broader user base of people who are actually using your application. Those are two really important points, and they're very different types of prototyping. And I think ultimately we should be trying to consider how we can get from point A to point B as efficiently as possible. In some contexts, that means like building out very elaborate prototypes that will last for a very long period of time. And in others, it's just quickly iterating on an idea and always choosing the prototyping tool and process that's the most efficient from getting you to point A to point B. So with this work, I quickly went into motion studies where I, I studied how um, a user could interact with a post and feed. Really low fidelity just to get a sense of what sort of curves and, and motion would make sense with this. Bring content back into that. And so seeing how users would interact with that content itself. And then finally, as we iterated on this, we realized that an entry point without a button wouldn't work for most users. So we actually added a button directly to the, to the, to the link attachment. So this prototype, what we built here, this is all using the same code. And so I'm pulling that over, oh, the same code over and over again in every prototype that I built. And ultimately got to a North Star that we sold internally that really helped get buy-in on this overall idea. I annotated it and made it really ready, easily, easy to share across the company. So one thing worth calling out is that Framer is code-based, and I think for most people in the room, not all of us come from an engineering background, and um, that can be really intimidating. And so I think one of the benefits that I'm calling out here is that Framer is incredibly flexible, and that's because of the code it's built on, but it's a big hurdle for a lot of us. I think there are two points with that. One, any tool that's far on the micro-interaction spectrum of prototyping tools needs a lot, has a, has a big learning curve. And Framer is no different in that way, but the benefit is that you're learning the medium that you're building in. Framer has also built all sorts of tools to make it easier to pick up Framer from the very get-go. So they have the um, design tab, which makes it really easy to just jump in and start designing things and immediately pull that into code. And they also have all sorts of components that you can just click a button and get added directly into the prototype. So this way, like, eventually you may need to learn how to code, but you don't need to know immediately. And so for me with my prototyping, I have a, a really close mapping between Sketch and Framer. And so when I build a prototype, I have one Sketch file that I use throughout the entire process of the product that I'm building. And I have multiple Framer prototypes or Framer files, but they all use the same layer names throughout. So it's really easy for me to drag, uh, like copy and paste a component from Sketch pull it into the next page, and then ultimately spin up another Framer prototype that has all the same functionality bake, baked into it. So you can see here, I'll use status bar in the, the sketch view, and then have a status bar component in the Framer view as well. And like I said, those will live out throughout the entire life cycle of the product. And with this, organization is really key. So what I've found to be really helpful is I'll actually, like I said, have one single sketch file that has multiple iterations from uh, point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3, point 0.4, 
that then maps to a folder full of framer prototypes that have the same layer uh, naming, naming structure as that sketch file itself. So again, this is really easy to like pull that code from a previous prototype into the next prototype and continue iterating as we develop and learn more about the, the product. So lab testing. Um, I don't know how many people are actually familiar with lab testing, especially at larger companies. This was relatively new to me, but it's a really important part of like at scale, we need to get all sorts of information from users who are very different than myself. Um, and so we'll go all over the world and get a sense from people in the lab how they like the product, how they would use it, and get qualitative feedback, not just on the usability, but over the overall experience. And so the framer prototype that I used to sell through in the company comes directly into the lab and enables us to do all sorts of interesting things. These are the results of an eye track tracking study. So one of the core questions we had was, was the button, was the entry point usable for people as they scrolled through feed? And so we actually brought people into the lab, put them in front of a machine that kind of tracks their eyes, and we could see how they viewed this product as they scrolled through feed. So really taking that prototype that I built and getting real-time feedback from users in the lab in some really interesting ways. We also do field testing. So I think this is a really interesting slide. These are actual images from user testing in Myanmar. So it's really important to us, again, that the designs that we produce work across the entire world. So Framer made it extremely easy for me to change my designs, up, update the content with the same files I'd used previously, translate it to, to, uh, to I, I actually don't know, the, I think it's, <laughs> Zauji is the pronunciation for the Myanmar's lang Myanmar language. Um, but we translated it and brought it to people in the lab and got feedback on this concept. Does this concept work outside of the US? Does this concept hold value for people who may not be quite as um, both literate or like literate in terms of news? And Framer made this really easy because they have an upload to cloud feature. So in real time, as people are in, the, in a room with a UX researcher, I could quickly be in the back there with the one-way mirror, change the prototype as we're getting real feedback, upload it to the cloud, and they could literally change the prototype on the fly and get feedback as quickly as possible. So again, the Framer prototype that I built has helped throughout this entire life cycle of this process and is incredibly critical to ultimately what we produce. And was also the same code that I used for the marketing assets when we actually launched this feature to 100% of the US. And I think that speaks to the flexibility of, of this tool and its value in terms of like investing in something that will be you know, valuable for you in the long term. So that's how designing with Framer is functional for large teams and pro or large projects. But for scaling teams, I think the question is like, we're building products that we ship every month, you know, week, day. It's a very different time horizon, right? But I think these same principles apply for scaling teams. So that same structure, where we have a status bar, strat status bar component in Sketch, and a status bar component in Framer, can apply across an entire company. So building out those systems that you can share across teammates makes it really easy for people to you know, reuse the status bar or rebuild that navigation. And you can go one step further by building that directly in code. And so one of the things that we've tried to do at Facebook is actually build out some of these components directly in code. So it's as easy as dragging in a module and bring, bring that module in and getting um, those components for free. And we've actually open sourced that to the, the design community on Facebook.design with um, both Framer and Origami components that map to iOS 11. And hopefully we'll do more of that in the future. But I think that's the type of thinking that makes Framer a great product for scaling again across these smaller teams. So in conclusion, Framer is super flexible. It's based in code, it's easy to reuse, and that works for me along long time horizons, but should work across small or large teams that are scaling as well. Thank you.